Horace Mann said all children should go to school. And he said that in large part because of something we have held true ever since, which is that education is a way out of poverty and a way into the middle class and upper class. And that has always been true whenever the country has faced a, a turning point. Even in the Civil War, we created legislation, Abraham Lincoln created legislation that improved access to higher education for working children as well as African Americans. And why did we do those things? We did them as a country because we saw too many people in poverty and we needed to figure out ways to enable these folks, these children, to move up. The Pulia Center is about people and it's about people coming around an idea. It's about faculty, graduate students, staff, and undergraduate students. And the idea is, it is a, a center, an institute, that is striving to implement social change that enables education to help people move on up and move out of poverty. Pulia Center is named after an amazing family, Earl and Pauline Pullius, who believe not only in USC, but the importance of education and the importance of the center of that education to be the faculty member educating the student. The center creates a home for some of the best known faculty in higher education in the country. These faculty are well known for their research on equity, on access, on financial aid, on the way policies impact access in higher education. And so this center gives them the opportunity to work collaboratively. It's not just theory driven, not just writing research reports that go on a shelf that nobody looks at. This is really about creating action and being involved in communities. We're going into these schools. We're working with the institutional leaders to create the changes. We'll be studying those, but it's really how do we help create changes at the same time that we're doing research. That's one of the reasons why I'm really proud to be a part of the Polio Center is because it's one thing to say, well, this is happening, but then to be an active change agent in what's happening, really have interventions that are utilized to change these structures that really are discouraging in higher education. Because of budget cutbacks, we don't have enough capacity in our post-secondary institutions. What are we seeing in terms of privatization in higher education and what can we do about it? Is it a good thing? Is it a bad thing? And ultimately, what is the impact on students? If you look at homeless youth, and if you take a hundred homeless children who are in ninth grade, the likelihood of those children graduating from high school and ultimately getting a four-year degree is about three in a hundred. So, when you look at these sorts of things, these gross inequities, I think the question is how can we enable schools, colleges, universities, community-based organizations, what can they do to improve the outlook and, and performance to enable more kids to get into college? We would like to see more students going to college. Um, the schools that we work with typically have lower college going rates, so as a center, you know, we have a lot of resources that we provide high schools that we work with. So basically the programs focus on one-on-one -on -one mentoring that help students with college applications and financial aid to really prepare them so that they will be accepted to a four-year university. So we've got a lot of exciting projects going on right now and in particular we're really excited about Collegeology which is a video game that will help uh, students get into college. So many people are looking at issues of access but this is a fundamental solution that can actually scale up across the country so that's a really exciting initiative. Another one is that we're working um, in the areas of not just access, but what happens when you're in college. I actually teach college knowledge living, and what I really enjoy about that is that I get to see the students really, you know, see college in a different light and get to answer their different questions and their eyes light up when they talk about this thing called college. What's it like to live? What's it like to have time management? All these different things, but to just really be able to engage them and have them learn and just bridge that gap between college could be this and then what college College actually might really be so that they're more successful in their experience. If there's a reason why I do what I do, it's that these kids' faces are, are ever present in my mind. Because these kind of kids not only have academic issues, but many of them may never have set foot on a college campus before. Well, how do you deal with that? You gotta have somebody in your corner saying, you can do it. I know you can do it. And that's what we're trying to do.